Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On. You may remember some time ago that I reviewed the Eashin QX90, a bind and fly FPV quad for under £50, and I loved it, and I still do. In fact, we were flying them around the pub just the other day. Well, Eashin have now introduced the QX90C, and it is brilliant. We haven't a clue what the C stands for, but maybe it's for cheap, because whilst hard to believe, this new model is even cheaper than the original QX90, and yet it's even better. This is part one of our review, during which we're going to unbox, inspect, bind, and configure the QX90C in preparation for our flight test. Links to all products are in the video description and you can support our channel by buying via those links. Give us a thumbs up as well and of course if you've not already, please do click that subscribe button. Can you believe that only 7% of our viewers click to subscribe? Well, give us a break and please click it now. Enjoy the review. So quite excited about this one. The Eashin QX90C has arrived from Banggood and it arrived as per usual, the quite secure packaging, lots of layers of foam here, which is really nice. And there it is. Now the packaging is much nicer than its predecessor, the QX90, which came in just a weird, transparent and pretty flimsy plastic box. This one comes in a nice cardboard box with printing on it and um, yeah, it looks much better. I've opted for the FR Sky version, so it will connect straight to my Tyrannis X9D Plus and it means it has an integral receiver. Let's open up the box and have a look at what's inside. It's QX90s in the past, I think, have just come with a printed bit of paper. Now we get quite a glossy manual. The issue can clearly see that these little quadcopters sell well. In here, we've got a lot of instruction about the specification, uh, the how to set it up in clean flight with various receivers if you've got the RTF version, and also how to bind it if you have the BNF bind and fly version, which we do. So that's what we're going to be doing later. We've got the FR Sky version to bind with our Tyrannus. We'll follow these steps a little bit later in this video. So as usual, you get a battery included with it. It's a 600 milliamp one cell. There is no battery voltage protection built into these batteries, so be careful not to drain them because you will blow them up. We've got a pack of spare props, which is good. Uh, in here we have a little one cell LiPo charger, the same old story, USB plug on the end of it. Um, although I tend to use a balance cable um, and then plug that into my main charger, a much better way of charging these batteries. And here is the actual quadcopter. Now you've got to be very careful when you remove these from the packaging. It is a very fragile little quad, so I'd recommend removing the foam first. Don't just pull it out of the foam. And there is the quad. Now, we also get a prop removal tool, which is very useful. That's actually made of carbon fiber. It's quite a nice touch. So here is the QX90 together side by side with the QX90C. They are exactly the same size, but there are some core differences here. So as I say, plastic frame on the new version, which is going to make it lighter, but it might not be as strong if you crash it, although they weigh virtually nothing. And so if you do crash these generally, you're not gonna easily damage them. Uh, I've not propped up the camera on this one yet, so excuse the camera for flopping around, but it's exactly the same camera unit, which is a bit of a shame because they did suffer on the QX90 from uh, quite a bit of lag when you go between different light conditions when you're flying, but that's easily changed. It's all modular and plug in here. The other thing you might notice is that the QX90C is raised up higher off the ground, and that's because there is now a built-in battery bay, which is good. On the old model, you just had to strap the battery in to this elastic band, which really wasn't that great. Now we've got a dedicated slide-in bay, so we slide the battery in, and that's a much tidier installation, and also a bit of additional protection for that battery as well. So I've got my Banggood scales here, only the best quality products shown on this channel. <laughs> I think these cost about six pounds. Uh, we'll weigh the QX90 first, and that comes in at 36.8 grams. If we now weigh the new version, the QX90C, that comes in at 33.8. So we're looking at three grams difference, which is not massively substantial, but everything counts on these micro quads. And that weight saving is no doubt gonna give us some better performance. 
So now a closer look at the QX90C. As before, we've got this floating little VTX and camera combination board. So there's a built-in 520 TVL camera here, as well as a 5.8 gig, 25 milliwatt VTX. It's a 32 channel transmitter, and it's got the built-in little circular antenna here. These take a lot of impact during crashes, and so, yeah, it would have been nice to have seen some sort of a roll cage here around it, but of course that adds weight. As before, the camera and the PCB are held in place with one of these tiny little elastic bands which comes with it. You wrap that around the PCB and then onto these little nodules. Now the downside of that is that you still can't set the tilt properly of the camera as before. Uh, a lot of people have built a little wedge to put underneath the VTX, that works fine, but it's all adding extra weight of course. And you're not going to be flying at top speeds with these little quadcopters, so it's probably sufficient. The frame, as I mentioned, is made of plastic, which is lighter, but it's not gonna take as much of an impact as the carbon fiber before you break something. And if you do break an arm here, you're gonna to have to replace the whole frame. The motors are exactly the same motors as fitted to the QX90, but obviously with the whole package being lighter, we should see some better performance out of those. The props are the same size as well, but what is really nice is that the motors are now modular. You'll notice on the main flight controller at the back here, we've got plugs. So rather than the motors being soldered straight onto the flight controller, if you break a motor at the field, you can now put a new motor in and plug it into the flight controller. So good on Eashin for making that much easier for the pilot. Also nice about this frame, not only the battery bay that we now have underneath, but also that the wires and the, the bottom of the motor cans are protected. So on the previous QX90, if you were scraping across the ground, these cans and the wires are completely exposed. Whereas now at least they're protected not only by these little landing feet, but also by the motors being slightly inset into these little motor container holders. Then if we look at the brains of this quadcopter, so as I said, it's the built-in FR Sky receiver version here. So there is no separate receiver PCB. I love that. It means it's lighter and it just means it's easier in general because it's all on one board. Now the USB port sits at the rear here for the flight controller programming. It's running clean flight from the factory. It's a shame they're not putting beta flight straight onto these yet, but I think they probably will eventually because it's the first thing we do when we get these, flash them. The flight controller is an SP Racing F3 Evo edition, and there are some tiny little boot pins on this board that we can see if you do want to flash it. Also at the back here, are some bind pins. Now it's a shame there's no button on here to make binding easier. Getting these bind pins crossed is quite hard work, we'll do that in a minute. Um, but also what's also quite nice is that the flight controller is sat within an enclosed bay here. Before on the QX90, the flight controller was just stuck onto a double-sided foam pad. And the problem with that is you get a lot of movement on the flight controller. This time there's no movement at all, so we should see less vibration and less interference with the flight controller. And finally, the only downside I see so far is that there is no low voltage warning buzzer. I know that this thing is tiny and it's got to weigh virtually nothing to fly well, but voltage is critical and it's very easy to puff up these little one cell lithium polymer batteries. So it would have been nice if there was a little buzzer on here as well. Uh, it might be that there are pins for a buzzer on this flight board and we can have a look at that. But also, because it has the built-in receiver, perhaps there's some telemetry, and we'll have a look at that when we bind it with our Tyrannus. So overall, lots of improvements over the original QX90. Um, this, the QX90 is a great little quadcopter, and as you've probably seen from past videos, we've had great fun flying it. This can only be better. So the next thing we're gonna look at now is binding this with our transmitter. So the next thing we're going to do is bind this to our Tyrannus X90+. Plus. We've got in the instruction manual here exactly how to do it. Um, basically it relates to shorting two little bind pins on the flight controller and getting it into bind mode. Now this can be very fiddly and I guarantee I won't be able to do this on the first attempt. Certainly with one set of hands, you might need some help doing this, somebody to plug in the battery for you whilst you're shorting these pins. The pins are on the back of the flight controller on the other side from the USB port. And I found that if you put the screwdriver in under here rather than from the top and put it flat against those two pins and then twist the screwdriver slightly 
like that. That then shorts the pins, then plug it in, and we're looking for a solid green light on the receiver, which will show that we're in bind mode. So here we go. No, flashing, so we've got to try again. And again, this isn't going well. There we go. Okay, so despite me practicing this before actually filming this section, I found actually the best way is to go in from the top and bind it. I'm using a flat headed screwdriver here. Put the flat head of that screwdriver across the two pins and there you go. Now another option that some people may consider is actually just to solder a blob across those two pins temporarily whilst you're binding it. But we've now got the solid green light, which means we are indeed in bind mode. And we can now take our transmitter which will turn on first. Hi Ash, I'm ready to go. Switch warning. Whoops. Okay, so what I'm now gonna do is take my QX90 that I've already got in memory actually, and I'm gonna copy that one. So we'll take a copy and we'll move that to there. Okay, so I'm now gonna go to the settings for that model and this is using an inbuilt FRSky D8 receiver as with the previous QX90 so we're going to leave that on D8 mode and I'm now going to move that into bind mode and put this in sight as well so when I press enter to enter bind mode if you keep an eye on that green light and there you go the light has now gone out so we can take the transmitter off bind mode unplug the battery like that and then plug the battery back in and we should now be bound to this little quad. So now that we're bound, just looking on the Tyrannus itself at the telemetry that's coming from it, we're getting absolutely nothing at the moment, which is a shame. I'll check in clean flight to see if there's a way we can get some data from on board the flight controller here, but it doesn't look like it's transmitting any. But we are now bound, which is good. And what we can now do is plug this little quadcopter into clean flight to see how it's configured and to set up our arm switch and also our flight modes. So I've got my laptop now with clean flight already set up and I'm gonna plug the USB port into the flight controller. Always be very careful when you plug in USB cables into these tiny little micro flight controllers because these USB ports are quite fragile and if they do become disconnected, you're gonna have a bit of a soldering nightmare on your hands. So now click connect in clean flight and we are in. First thing I'm gonna do, I know that this table is nice and flat so I'm gonna calibrate the accelerometer always a very important step to make sure that you don't get drift. Now we're nice and flat and calibrated. Uh, motor stop is enabled, so do not spin the motors when armed, and we've got disarmed motors regardless of throttle value. We're going to be wanting to configure air mode on this eventually, so we may be changing some of these settings. For now, I'm gonna leave everything as it is out of the box. Uh, you can see we've got battery voltage monitoring, although there is no buzzer on this flight controller, unfortunately. And we have telemetry enabled, but we've not got anything coming out of that receiver, unfortunately. In terms of fail safe, it's configured to land. I'm gonna actually change that to drop so that if we do have any issues, it will drop out of the sky and cut the motors immediately. I'm just gonna save and reboot that very quickly. Okay, there we go. Uh, in terms of PIDs, I'm not gonna alter any of these. The P's look quite high, actually. Uh, again, we're gonna leave it all out of the box as it came from Banggood. Receiver is all set up in here already. Now, if I actually turn on my Tyrannus, so with the transmitter on, you can see that all of the channels are working nicely there. We've got all of the channels that we need mapped functioning as well. So aux one and aux two primarily, and we'll be setting those up shortly. So looking at the modes tab, we've got arm and angle both configured on aux one, which is quite odd. This is exactly how it came out of the box. So arm, first of all, is on the channel that I want it to be, which is aux one and on the same switch, that works perfectly. However, for the modes, I'm gonna change that to aux two and I'm also gonna add horizon mode here. So we're gonna have angle mode as the first setting 
Everybody sets theirs up differently, of course. This is how I like to set mine up. I'm gonna have horizon mode on the second position, and then of course rate mode will be on the third. What I'm also going to do is configure air mode to be on aux two, and to trigger when I'm in the third flight mode, which essentially is rate mode. So with all that set up, hit save. And I can now test that configuration. Yep, that all looks like it's working nicely. Angle horizon, yep, and then arm disarm, lovely. Now I haven't got the battery connected to the quad at the moment, so there is no danger of it firing up. So just another quick check, uh, adjustments, we don't need to look through any of these, GPS power and battery. Okay, so we've got no power and battery configuration here because I need to upgrade the version of, of clean flight that's currently flashed to this quad. Motors, we've got no battery connected, so that's not gonna do anything at the moment anyway. And CLI, if I just type in version here, you can see we're using Clean Flight SP Racing F3 Evo, as I said earlier, and it's Clean Flight version 1.13. So that's it all programmed and ready to go. Let's give it a quick flight test. Unfortunately, you'll have to wait until part two for the flight test. We're filming it now and so it will be available later this week. It will include a full line of sight and FPV flight test. In the meantime, please do click to subscribe to our channel. We would love to hit 3000 subscribers before the end of February, but to do so, we need your help. The more subscribers we have, the more new product reviews we can produce. Thanks again for watching.